high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger and fast. Present Masquerade Party. And now, here is your genial master ceremonies for Masquerade Party, Peter Donald. On a night like this, I don't know where they're clapping or drying themselves. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Masquerade Party. This is the show you know where celebrities and all kinds of fantastic makeups come, and our panel tries to peer through the goo and find out who they really are. As usual, we start by meeting the experts. First of all, a sure sign that spring is really here, Robin Sherwood. We have the little gal who's always as sweet as a breath of spring, Miss Mary Healy. Mary, spring is the time when poets abound, but this guy writes brilliant stuff all the year round, Ogden Nash. And finally, our fashion expert who makes this rather startling prediction that Milady's hats this spring will again be worn on the head, Ilka Chase. Well, never mind the heads, just be on our toes tonight. I hope that all of you uh, sitting there at home have been trying to guess all week who our mystery masquerader was, because we've brought it back, of course, to try and stump you and the experts, and here it is now, introducing masquerader number one. <laughs> you didn't take the Geritol, huh? You look years older. Well, now... This disguises in some way a clue to our masquerader's identity, maybe a connection with place of birth or uh, uh, where it's living now, an event or any one of a number of things, even occupation. Now, would you just say something to get the show started, please? Uh, who is this Jane Mansfield I've been reading about? <laughs> hmm? You've been taking the Geritol. That's perfectly all right. Now, you folks who have been guessing at home, we're going to let you know who our masquerader really is. Questioning with Mr. Robin Sherwood. All righty. Are you, are you uh, made up as a specific character? That's none of your business, son. Hey, that's the way we play the game there, Dad. Got to oh. do that. He is disguised as a specific character. I'll a tell specific you that, character. Specific. Well, is the character real or fictional? Yeah, this is a real character, Booby. Uh, Bobby. <laughs> Booby. <laughs> well, uh, are you as old as you look? Are you? <laughs> oh, fine. Uh, you know, Pete, this fella could be replaced by Grandma Moses. You know? <laughs> Any minute. That's your three questions. We move along to lovely Mary Healy. Well, uh, could you perhaps be uh, made up as... Uh, could you be Mayor Wagner, for instance, uh, dressed up as Wagner? Richard Wagner? Say, honey, why don't you and I go out after the show and have a nice glass of well water? No, thanks. I'm driving home. I'd better break in here. At the one-minute mark, it is not Richard Wagner or Mayor Wagner, either. Wagner or Wagner, no. 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 Uh, are you by any chance an American? Uh, north or south? <laughs> our, our masquerader is disguised as an early American, Mary. I won't give you any more help than that. An early American? Well, I was looking in one of my, uh, my little boy's uh, history books the other day, and I saw a gentleman look very much like you. Uh, could he possibly be uh, Eli Whitney, the inventor of the cotton gin? Gin? I uh, don't drink gin. <laughs> no, it's, it's not Eli gin. Uh, uh, it's not Eli whiskey, for that matter, either, or Whitney. I believe that's your three. Skunk, come on that, Dad, and we move along to Ogden Nash. Well, uh, speaking of... <laughs> Grandma Moses. <laughs> Just got it, huh? <laughs> Uh, Mary spoke of history books. That throws me back on the early American trail. I wonder whether uh, possibly uh, you, there's a slight resemblance. Uh, you could be a uh, fellow Harvard alumnus of mine, President John Adams. Is that who you're supposed to represent? No, Ogden, this is not uh, John Adams. And uh, matter of fact, I, I don't think he went to Harvard. Uh, North Bronx High School. <laughs> 
Well, I say, well, uh, perhaps when you graduate, you might go to Harvard. <laughs> He's recruiting this week. Uh, sir, are you uh, disguised as an early American man of letters? Well, uh, even if I tried, I couldn't be wittier. <laughs> oh, no, no. no. Well, in the same mood, I may reply, you look more like the Dickens. Um, uh, you are not disguised as President Adams, but nevertheless, do you represent, are you made up as an early American political figure? Uh, yes, I am. Yes, sir. Very much interested in politics. This is the three-minute mark, and we move along to Boca Chase. Sir, are you disguised as an American president? Well, no. Not a president? Not a no. president, okay. That fixes me there. We do have other Americans on us. Well, we had a pretty good American called Daniel Webster. Would you be disguised as Daniel Webster? No, I'm not. No, not Daniel Webster. One more Robert question. Would be Hayes? Uh, not, not Hayes. Now, uh, would you be Henry Clay? No, no. No, not Henry Clay. That's your no. three, and we move down to Bobby Sherwood. Not much time left. Well, would you be uh, either... Uh, Robert Fulton or DeWitt Clinton or, uh... Would you like to phrase the thing, you know, one question at a time, old kid? Well, are you either of those two? You know, whippersnapper, I am. Yes, it is either of those oh, now, two. Oh, come That's on. That's one question down. Go ahead. Oh, I got it. <laughs> you have? Yeah, I mean, George DeWitt? Yeah. George DeWitt! <laughs> There we go. <laughs> this is, of course, the man of many voices and faces, many talents, a great impersonator, great <laughs> nightclub <laughs> entertainer, a great disc jockey, a great fella. I just left him a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he wrote my whole week in Miami, uh, Pete. He wrote my whole week in Miami because when I got down to Miami after the show last week, yeah. I saw him on the street and I kept ducking him for a whole week. <laughs> <laughs> and I lost a tan. I was indoors for a whole week in Miami. <laughs> And at those prices, too. Uh, George, of course, I don't suppose we have to tell anybody about your hit TV show, Name That Tune, which we see and enjoy. Well, let's tell them about it. It's Name That Tune. And uh, you've got some eyelashes here, the eyebrows. John O. Lewis. That's right. about as much as we can do. Uh, so what else is new? Well, uh, uh, things are great in Miami, you know. Uh, I had been ducking him all week. <laughs> it's real funny. You don't know how funny it is, because uh, living down there in the sunshine and... Uh, and uh, Bobby lives down here. He's one of my neighbors. And I had to stay away from him all week. I was just afraid he would recognize me. <laughs> well, I tell you, I happen to know that you're going to do some rather nice charity work, as you always do down in Miami. So we don't have to ask you uh, where your money is going tonight. How far did we go with that one, Susan? Well, the panel used up 238 seconds, Peter. That is 238 smackaroos to your favorite charity, George. What is that? I would like it to go to the uh, Variety Children's Hospital sure. in Miami, Florida. They will get our check for $238. And you... You're just like all these other flying fellas. You need a little extra energy. Take some Geritol. Make you look much better. You Get your hand back. Thanks, George. All right, now before we meet our next masquerader, I would like you to meet once again Mr. Bob Shepard. Thank you very much, Peter. Our friends, do you recognize yourself in these pictures? Do you feel tired and weary on the job? Don't blame it on spring fever. It may be tired blood. Do your daily chores make you feel worn out? Don't blame it on spring fever. It may be tired blood. Yes, this is the time of year when you may feel tired and run down. Check with your doctor. You may be suffering from iron deficiency anemia. We call it tired blood. Now to feel stronger fast, take Geritol, the high potency tonic that begins to strengthen tired blood in only 24 hours carrying strength and energy to every part of your body. What just two tablespoons of liquid Geritol or two Geritol tablets contain twice the iron in a pound of calf's liver. So remember, if you feel tired and run down because of tired blood, take Geritol. You will feel stronger fast within seven days or your money back. That's for sure. All right, nice going. One for your side panel. We'll try again. Here we go, introducing masquerader number two. <laughs> this, 
this is a, a bit of a surprise to me, I'm afraid. Now, uh, Mr. Masquerader, can we get that in the shot? Uh, can you see the other member of the team over there? Fine. Would you say something in the mic just to get the panel going, please? Well, that Nash over there looks like the leader needs a little overhauling. Well, excuse me, madam, but if you had that many miles on you, you'd need overhauling, too. Oh! Okay, <laughs> very nicely said. Now let's uh, let the folks at home and in the studio know who our masquerader really is. a second and we start with a rather baffled looking Mrs. Peter Lynn Hayes. Mary? Well, you're disguised as a filling station attendant, I assume, but you're a, you're a woman, aren't you? Yes, but uh, I'm, I'm doing a little freelance and I've got my own tank. <laughs> well, this disguise is, uh, these people are known for their service. I mean, people who work in a service station. Are you a tennis star, perhaps? No, no, Mary. No tennis. Who'd you have in mind? Gorgeous Gassy Moran? <laughs> Ain't Gassy nor Gussie neither. Well, service station attendants are usually, uh, that's usually a, a, a man's job, isn't it? Are you perhaps uh, famous for doing a man's job? Well, there are some things that men do and there are some things that women do. Yes. Yeah, and viva la difference, as we used to say. <laughs> I, believe that, I believe it's Ogden Nash's turn now. Well, uh, madam, there seems to be plenty of room on that sofa. Don't you want to ask your one-armed friend there to uh, sit down? <laughs> Sorry, Ogden. Tell me, Peter, do they work together as a team? No, they do not work together as a team, but I will tell you this. One of them is definitely more famous than the other. Well, that was, you've taken the next question out of my mouth. Oh. Uh, well, seriously, is this disguise connected with a television show con uh, sponsored by a gasoline company? Well, your gas is as good as mine. Oh. The, the answer to that is no. <laughs> well, filling station attendants keep a lot of cars on the road. I wonder whether we could have in front of us somebody like... Uh, uh, Miss Donna Shore or Miss Patty Page, who through television keep a lot of cars on the road? Uh. <laughs> well, I, I keep a lot of taxis on the road, too. <laughs> no, it is not either of those two uh, ladies, and we move along to Ilka Chase. Two minutes well, gone. Uh, Madam Masquerader, uh, besides giving out gas all day, uh, service uh, gas station service attendants always have quite a supply of uh, free air and... Uh, all kinds of oil. Uh, would you be in politics in real life? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Not in what politics. Say. Well, let's see. Um, uh, possibly our car is the connection we're looking for. Would you be a, a very popular model car imported from England? Would you uh, be perhaps with a thick accent there, Miss Deborah Carr? No, no, Elsa, you are parking up the wrong street, as we say, on the other side. This is not Deborah Carr. Well, let me see. Uh, there, was a, there was a famous um, radio program for years, The City Service, uh, starring Jessica Dragonette. Are you an opera singer? Are you Miss Dragonette? Mm. I, I have no connection with opera. No, no connection with opera at all. Three minutes gone, and we're back to Bobby Sherwood. You aren't by any chance Mary Ford, are you, kid? No. Well, does it have anything to do with ethyl? How do you mean, Bobby? You want response? Well, ethyl is a gas, a yeah. type of gasoline. Well, is her name Ethel? Let me put it that way. Is your name Ethel? Hey. Yeah, we'll let you put it that way. Her name is Ethel. Her name is Ethel? <laughs> sure. Now, now I'm stuck. <laughs> oh, no. It can't be Ethel Merman. It can't be I think my sponsor won't mind. I'm going to disqualify you for the whole business. I'm going to give you $300. You can't ask a question that way. It can't be, Ethel. Huh? 
I know, but it was <laughs> Ethel Merman, and I think we fooled you anyway. This is high test all the way. This lovely... Oh, does the chin slip around to the back or something? It's good, it doesn't it? This is, of course, one of the greatest stars of any time or any part of show business you want to mention. And boy, we are delighted to have you here with us, Ethel. Just wonderful. I didn't know she was here. Well, you're not supposed to. <laughs> The night night you know that, we've blown the show, you know. (laughs) Ethel, tell me, what are all the doings? Lots of TV stuff. I like to hear about it. Well, I'm here to do um, two TV shows. Yeah. Um, A week from tonight, I'm doing the uh, United States Steel Hour. It's a straight dramatic play. You're doing a lot of that dramatic stuff, Yeah, I like that, yeah. Yeah. Good. And then uh, a week from this coming Saturday night, I'm doing the uh, hour and a half spectacular, uh, which is... um, all the music of uh, George Gershwin, a big hour and a half color. Oh, golly, that's just oh, wonderful. Okay. That ought to be a thrill. Well, we'll all be watching that, and now we want to find out what your favorite charity is. Well, um, out in Denver, where I live, we have an organization called uh, Sewell House, mm-hmm. and they sort of take care of the children that are afflicted with cerebral palsy, and I'd like my check to go there. Well, I tell you what we're going to do. I'm not even as- asking Susan. We're sending 300 bucks for 12 <laughs> performance. Thank you. To Sewell House. And, uh, Thank you very much. I want you to take some of this to your husband, Bob Six, All because right. he's only about nine feet tall. <laughs> and this is a large Bible. Thanks Thank ever you, so Peter. much, Ethel. Thank you very Bless much. Bless a lot. Okay, panel. That was one and a half wins for you. Oh, that Healy. All right, here we go, introducing Masquerader number three. I tell you, we got more stuff than people here tonight, haven't we? Now, the clue you see on your home screens is not seen by the panel at uh, any time, and uh, you may address your questions to either one of these two. Oh, by the way, sir, could you play that thing? Can you actually play that? Well, I certainly would. Would you, would you please play? Sure. Just... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, now I tell you, as usual, we're going to keep the home audience in the dark for a little while, let you play the game along with us, and we'll start with Mr. Ogden Nash, who is champing at the bit. Well, I will be decent, sir, and not ask you if you can play another tune. <laughs> uh, sir and madam, are you related in real life? Uh, I thought possibly you might be uh, grandfather and granddaughter. Uh, Ogden, I would say that this gentleman has probably only voted once in his life. Uh, For uh, McKinley? (laughs) (laughs) No, I don't think it's McKinley. Let's tell everybody who the masqueraders really are, huh? Are you, uh, sir and madam, are you husband and wife in real life? I should say we signed a nice long-term contract. (laughs) Well, it looks as if the gentleman's option might be uh, expiring. (laughs) No. Uh, Are you, sir, a um, classical musician or uh, one I might have seen performing, say, at Carnegie Hall? Well, I've never played in Carnegie Hall, and uh, to be quite frank, I don't think I ever will. No, I don't think you ever will either. That's one minute gone, and we have Ilka Chase. Uh, well, sir, you say you're not in the field of classical music. Are you possibly in the field of jazz or popular music? Uh, no, but I follow the hit parade. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, indeed. Very have we established if one of you is more famous than the other? Oh, we, we never discussed that, Miss Chase. Yeah, and to be on the safe side, we had better not start it here. I don't want to get into anything. I would say this, that our masqueraders are equally famous. Let's put it that way. Do you work together as a team? Well, maybe in private life, Miss Chase, but I think it would, might be a little awkward in professional life. I don't think it would work out. <laughs> no, well, it'd be different anyway. We might try it sometime, huh? Uh, That'd be pretty no, do not work together as a team, and uh, Ilka is twinkling, but... Uh, uh, we move along to Bobby Sherwood at the two-minute mark. You know, I was a band leader for many years, and I've always wanted to answer this question. How do you get that thing up under your chin? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
but the string base is kind of like a, we, we used to call it a doghouse. Are you someone who is currently in the doghouse, old boy? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that uh, quite that way, Bobby. Uh, no. Well, is this, is this disguise connected with your name? Are you Richard Basehart or uh, Lee Bowman or uh, somebody like that? No, no, no connection. I thought Are when you... she was turning the pages, you were going to call Alana Turner before you missed that no. one completely. But it isn't, but it isn't, but it isn't. Or Patty Page, believe me. No, no, not sure. Patty Page either. Not Jimmy <laughs> Fiddler. Not, not Jimmy, Jimmy Fiddler, no. <laughs> Or Viola Dana, you no. know. <laughs> All right, listen, are you in the entertainment world, sir, before we run out of those names? Mm-hmm. No. Uh, <laughs> I protest this answer on the basis that it is completely incoherent and I can't understand. One said yes, the other said. Well, that's possible, what you is know. It? What is it? That's you mean a... one is and one isn't? Yeah. Yes, that's right, Bobby. This is a pretty sneaky way to get Yeah, married. you got it all figured out and we give Mary Healy the ball now. Gee. You're not uh, Svengali and Trilby, are you? No, we couldn't get them. <laughs> They're busy this week. Well, uh, I just don't know where to go. I'm oh, trying to dig. Oh, okay. oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Wait, wait, go ahead, Elka. You can pass but, to Elka if you want. I would like to, because I think she knows. I, I'm I sure. See that, I see that. I'm sure the category he's I in. I just want to ask if I can Far find one away, thing, maybe I can that. find the other. <laughs> Is the lady a very charming by the name of Lucy Marlowe, by any chance? Yes! Oh. So, then the other fellow's got to be that Yankee, Andy Carey. Right! <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. Well, our, our hand has never lost its skill. She's been away in Europe and comes back and pegs the ball players right away. This, of course, is one of the most charming young actresses. Uh, Miss Marlowe. Uh, <laughs> you follow all yeah. the marriages, don't you? Yes, I know you do. How are you doing over there? You having a little trouble at third base there, Andy? Andy, I don't think I have to explain to any of the gentlemen and most of the ladies in the United States, third base for the wonderful Yank. And now, oh, look, it's better without the makeup. Isn't that nice? Sure. Sometimes I never know, you know. <laughs> well, uh, tell me all about yourselves. Uh, you, of course, are signed with Columbia Pictures, aren't you? Yes, Peter, uh-huh. Keith Taylor told me he's been seeing some of your television work, too, and he said that you are just a darling. I haven't had the pleasure of seeing that yet. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, she is a darling, isn't very she? Very much. <laughs> and uh, how about, what's this business in New York? Have they given you a little stay? Oh, no, uh, we just finished a little musical with Frankie Lane. It was a great deal of fun called He Laughed Last. Uh-huh. And Columbia's bringing out the Eddie Duchin stories pretty soon, too. Do you, uh, do you go back now while Andy's playing, or, or what? Oh, no, I'm going to stick close to my... Old man now. <laughs> how, how, how can you how can you get away from the picture? How can she get away from the whole season? Well, we've like got that? something special coming up in November. And, What's that? Uh, well, we're we're going to be uh, mother and dad. <laughs> in November, <laughs> wonderful! Thank you ever so much. Oh, that's terrific! Isn't that fair? Please, Daddy. Now let's find out what we did for sweet charity, Sue. Two hundred thirty seconds, Peter. Two hundred and thirty uh, dollars to your favorite charity. Now I guess you agree at this uh, young age, don't you, on the joint charity? I should yeah. say. What? Well, I think we'll. Uh, uh, donated to the Crippled Children's Hospital in Oakland, California. Okay, that's two hundred and thirty dollars to the Children's Hospital. I don't know whether you need this or not, but try it anyway. It's great. Thanks ever so much for being with us. Lots of luck, Ed. Bye, bye, honey. Bye, bye. Okay, are you ready, panel? Here we go. Introducing Masquerader Number Four. This is our mystery masquerader. We're going to ignore the panel again and let all you folks at home try and figure out who it is until next week. As you saw, this uh, particular uh, lady was uh, standing by a sewing machine. That may have something to do with it. We'll have a last look at this uh, fool in a minute. But, you know, here's the thought. If children's shoes could talk, and of course they do have tongues, you know, they might say something like this. I'm a scuffed, scraped, beat-up shoe. Once I was bright and handsome, but I've led a long, hard life, just like your own youngster's shoes. Oh, here it comes again, another shine with that ordinary liquid polish. Why don't they get wise? Don't they know that when they've finished, my scuffs and scrapes will still show through? Ah, 
Saved by Esquire Scuff Coat, the miracle self-polishing discovery that makes beat-up shoes like me look new again. Practically puts a new finish on the leather with no rubbing, no brushing at all. You just slap Esquire Scuff Coat on. Hmm, that feels good. And say, look at my scuffs and scrapes now. They're going, going, they're gone. And in a few minutes, I'll look like these. Bright, soft, natural looking. And no work at all, thanks to amazing Esquire Scuff Coat. So get a bottle of Esquire Scuff Coat tomorrow. And be sure to look for the name Esquire on the bright circus package. It's still only 25 cents. I'm going to let you have that real close-up look at our mystery masquerader, the uh, lady with the sewing machine, probably a housewife who makes her own clothes. You know, there was a farmer's wife one time, made her own clothes for years, poor miserable thing, and, and one day the farmer came in, he said, you know what I done? He said, I was out pitching hay, I stubbed my toe on the pitchfork, and it fell up in the air and come down, and it hit the ground, and now a lot of oil is coming up, and we're going to make about four or five million dollars. And his wife says, oh, isn't that wonderful? She says, now maybe I can buy some decent clothes. He says, Mother, you've been wearing decent clothes all your life. Now, by golly, you're going to dress like other women. You know, that's all. <laughs> well, we've rushed our masquerader off in a waiting cab so the panel won't get a chance to see who it is. And I might mention masquerade parties. Guests are flown to New York on American Airlines' great DC-7. Now we'll say good night to our great DC panel. Ilka Chase, good night. Hug <laughs> man. And we do hope you'll come back next week to help our panel unwig the big wigs on our favorite television game, Masquerade Party. See you then. Good night. <laughs>